the Mark 6 GTI with the EA AAA 2 litre TSI engine. Got random misfires, uh, everything's been checked, and it's looking like it's going to be a walnut glass carbon clean of the intake ports. We've actually removed the uh, intake air temperature sensor from the uh, inlet manifold, and you can look down and see into the ports and see uh, carbon build up inside the manifold and the port. So we're going to pull the inlet manifold off and we'll show you the process of uh, walnut blasting the cylinder head, uh, the intake ports. So I'm just going to start by removing the breather pipe from the inlet manifold and I'm just using a flat plate screwdriver just to uh, prise the clips off of the, uh, the PCV and the inlet manifold. Be careful not to break these, they don't take too much um, but you can easily get them off. Next I'm going to start removing the EVAP solenoid, just unclipping it from the inlet manifold also and unplugging the electrical connection. We'll also pop off the fuel line out from the inlet manifold also. So you can see I've got the fuel line off and I'm just going to tuck it out of the way so it can get to my manifold. I'm going to unplug the cam sensor. Just going to use a little flat plate screwdriver again just to aid getting it off without breaking it. Just going to chuck my oil filter cup on here and we'll use that later to get the filter off. I'm just going to start whizzing out the bolts that hold the inlet manifold to the cylinder head. They're mainly T30 bolts that will go uh, the whole length top and bottom and then on each side on the top edges there is two 10mm nuts on the end of the M6 studs. So just looking with a torch down below the manifold, you can just see the T30 heads of the bolts down through these uh, gaps. And that's what we're going to be sending our extension down to undo. And there's one at the top, another one. So multiple T30 bolts holding this on. And then we've got our 10mm nuts at each end. It's a little bit of a fiddle getting the socket on there. Um, sometimes it can be handy to use a magnet, something like that, a magnetic socket um, for the 10 mil nuts, I mean. Um, but the T30 bolts are pretty good. I'm also just going to unbolt this bracket off the bottom of the inlet manifold, which holds on the wiring plugs that were run underneath the inlet manifold. So again, just T30 bolts, and there's two of them holding it on. And once that's pushed down, that's no longer needed to, need to come out with the manifold. Same thing this end, we're going to bolt these coolant lines of the inlet manifold, same T30 nut bolts again. And then there's just one underneath the front here. So I've just got that EVAP pipe off and unplugged also. Got the uh, breather pipe off also from the uh, pipe running underneath the manifold. And we're just going to do the boost hose from the throttle body. That's a 7mm. Unplug the intake air temperature sensor and the throttle body. And we have to feed the wiring out underneath so the wiring harness is going to stay with the engine and the manifold is going to leave it behind and it is quite tight around this intake air temperature sensor so what I tend to do is undo the T30 nut and you can just spin the, the sensor enough that you can then get the wiring harness out from behind it so just rotating that and then putting the screw back in so we don't forget it allows us to get that harness out from behind it So now we've got that oil filter out, we can now get down into the wiring harness. We can just undo this clip, allowing us to disconnect our oil pressure sensors or switches, which they actually are, oil pressure switches, and we can actually separate them from the engine harness and allow the manifold to come up without dragging it because there is a wiring harness that's part of what comes up with the inlet manifold um, due to the ejectors, etc., being up in the We'll disconnect this vacuum hose, 
which is going down to our solenoid underneath the manifold, which controls our um, inlet manifold flaps. So that's a vacuum hose. There's another T30 down here, as you can see. And this is bolting our boost pipe to the block. And if I get that undone, we'll be able to just push the boost pipe and down enough off of the throttle body. boost pipe off of the throttle valve now. Here's a little bit of a tight fit in there and it's going to be tight on the throttle body as well. Try not to tear the pipe when you're removing it as you will create a boost leak. So we see this triple square 10. That, that aluminium support is bolted into the block and to the underside of the inlet manifold. So I have a special socket here that I'm undoing it. I've got to get this um, fuel pressure sensor unplugged. So the usual thing of flipping the tab up and we can pull the connector off. That's the manifold off, so this is our first look into the ports. Not the worst I've seen, but bad enough to need doing. We'll pull those deflector plates out and have a good look as well. Got the rag over the oil filter open so we don't pull any, anything in there. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at the inlet manifold as well. And if we look at the tips of these injectors, they do look quite coated in carbon buildup. Obviously, going into the cylinder, the cylinder, what is that, three and four? And two seem pretty bad. Number one, not so bad, but still, we'll give them a wipe over before we put them back in. And we'll just have a good look at this manifold and make sure there's nothing untoward with that. So the deflector plates just pull out. Some people delete these and tune them out with the swirl flaps and everything. But this is a bit of a bad idle, I believe, from what I've heard. Um, so yeah, you can see how shrouded those valves are. Obviously those are completely wide open at the moment. And then you've got that. You can just see the complete difference between cylinder to cylinder. It's going to cause such an imbalance and on that stray leaf that's in there. So we'll just rotate this so it looks at the moment that we'll probably be able to do number two and number three at the same time. And we'll just rotate it so we've got some valves closed, block off the ones that are open and we'll do a um, walnut blast. So we've got that open port with the valves open, blocked off with some duct tape. We'll put some paper towels in the uh, injector holes and then we'll blast these three cylinders. So our first blast of the ports and it's starting to break it down. It is pretty heavy, this one's done probably the best. That left valve looks pretty good. So yeah, it's getting there. It's just, it's quite hard built on stuff. So we'll just keep blasting it and it will eventually come off. But that's probably only five minutes or so of blasting. So you can see the results pretty quickly of what it's actually gonna start doing. It's already start cleaning the throats up. And then we'll move over to, once these three are done onto that final cylinder and it'll be a good, once we get these three clean, we'll pull that off and you can get a before and after next to each other and get a good comparison. So these valves are almost pretty much done. A little bit of finessing and they'll be finished. That gives you an idea of how clean they go. Just peel back this one that's not been done. Just to give you a side by side comparison. See the valve guides, those bronze things at the top of the stems. You can literally see just carbon. <laughs> and these valves are open so you can see how shrouded those stems are with the open valves. So that's what will sit up against those valve guides when the valves are shut. It is quite hard carbon and it's been quite hard getting that broken down. Like I said, there is still a little bit more 
to come off as well. Like you can see just through a little bit around that valve on the right. So yeah, we just uh, finalise that and then uh, be happy, reassemble it. So that's it, it's uh, pretty much done with these ports. So we're going to move on to that final one and just finish it off. So it's come out pretty good. Um, we really struggled to get it um, much more cleaner than that. So yeah, we'll leave them at that, like I say, um, and we'll move on to this final one. So what we'll have to do now is obviously just rotate the engine over and uh, get this one to the valves close, probably TDC on cylinder one, and then uh, these ones will probably be open, so what we'll do is we'll tape across the whole three of those, because obviously we don't want to introduce any crap into those, and any walnuts, loose walnuts, as you can see there is few walnuts that end up everywhere. We've got the PCB plugged. So yeah, we just want to be cleaning out here and nowhere else. So that's our before on cylinder one. So that's cylinder one now with the valves completely closed. And you can see how that carbon buildup matches up perfectly with the valve guides. And then we've got the rest of the ports blocked off with duct tape again. So we'll start blasting now and then we'll give these a clean up. That's our first blast started on this cylinder one. So you can see we've got a decent amount out of this already. More so it seems out the right uh, out the left port, but yeah, a bit more finessing and obviously the heavier the harder the build up is, the harder it is to get off. So um, yeah, we'll uh, I know I find in the intake just, just in the tip of the ports here I, I tend to just use a, a light wire brush just to knock the, because uh, it's basically just dust that's built up there. And then that stuff that's a bit further down, the valves will blast again. So this will probably get three or four blasts. We're now completed with cylinder one also. You can see how clean that was, is compared to how it was. Got some cleaning up of our deflector plates to do. You can see our blasting kit we're using. So this is the lance that goes down the middle of this vacuum cleaner tube assembly so there's actually a hole there so this fits onto the port this is actually BMW tools that we're using it's exactly the same as the Volkswagen assembly this this actual hopper or whatever you want to call it so this actual unit is the same as the Volkswagen assembly um, it's, it's just the uh, attachments that are different so I'm saying it's probably made by the same company like I say we've got the BMW thing because we do Volkswagens, Audis, Beamers, Mercs etc, Land Rovers but yeah all this is the same just the, the fittings and the ports so unfortunately we're not sealing perfectly around where the deflector flaps go in so we, that's why we've got all this mess of walnuts everywhere but we're, we've plugged everything that's um, going to be a worry for getting walnuts in etc um, so yeah, that's going to be the next thing we have to get is the adapters to fit in there because it will get a nicer seal and better with the vacuum cleaner, um, cleaner, etc. Less tidying up to do, and I think it actually makes it more effective even just to blast them, um, you know, in a enclosed uh, chamber almost. So, but yeah, that's what we're using uh, this air pressurized container, and we're using walnut shells to blast it. So now simply it's going to be. Um, clean those injectors and fit new injector seals and refit the manifold. So we're all back together so I've just attached VCDS and we're just going to scan and clear the codes and we'll also uh, see what our idle is like. So we had this cylinder 2 misfire that kept coming up intermittent but not really a, a major obvious one no leaking injectors or anything like that ignore the intake manifold one that's just come up from me having the intake manifold disconnected so we'll clear these codes out from the uh, the memory. Once that's done, we'll take the car for a road test and just make sure no misfires occur and no fault codes return.